So welcome to We Figure This Out. In this little series of videos, we're going to talk about things we sell in a store that we may not know a lot about and you may not know a lot about. So together, we're going to figure it out through research and trial and error. Hi, in this segment of We Figure It Out, we'd like to talk about extreme metal paints from AK Interactive. Now, the inspiration for this video was a question I had regarding the black primer that is used with it. Now, the first thing we want to say about extreme metal paint is it oil-based, like an enamel. It's airbrush ready out of the bottle. So this would be cleaning up with uh, mineral spirits, Valsar, Termitine, stuff like that. So thereby, it is not as smelly as a lacquer. That's, that's one of its advantages. It won't be as stinky as, as a lacquer, like an Alclad will. Now, we assume because it's enamel, it might be a tougher paint than, say, the, the metal color from Vallejo, which is an, uh, an acrylic. Um, it can be cleaned with water and uh, thins with their thinner, which is a very non-smelling thinner and, and non-toxic thinner. So we would like to think that it might hit somewhere between the two of them. So I did some investigating to figure it out. Now, first I will address the issue about the black primer. Now, like Alclad, they recommend that you use this primer under the most metallic, which is your chrome and your polished or aluminum. So, like the Alclad, they suggest putting the gloss black under it to give you that back reflection, and then you layer coats of this on until you get the desired effect of chrome or aluminum. Now, when I did some research about this, the fellow that asked me about it said he didn't have great success shooting it. And I heard some more problems with the black uh, gloss primer that comes with Alclad. On the other hand, I've heard lots of people say they love the stuff and it lays down well for them. So it's one of those alchemies, you ask five different modelers, you get five different answers. I sprayed at low pressure. I sprayed at high pressure. I did it where I had no humidity. I did it where... You know, the sun was shining through the window. I, I don't know. I like You get a whole bunch of different circumstances, which can cause a whole bunch of different results. Thereby, you know, you can take people's experiences with a grain of salt. Really, you have to try it for yourself. It either works well for you or it doesn't. Now, on the bright side, because it's enamel, um, what I found worked really well for me on the Alclad, I've, I've said this before probably in other videos, I take the best basic testers, plaw, black gloss enamel, I lay that down as my base coat, and I put my Alclads over it, and they work beautifully. That stuff lays down fine for me, and then the Alclad really pops over it. So I imagine if this stuff doesn't work for you, you can do the same thing. I also found in my research, looking at some of the forums and Reddits and so forth online, that this stuff does lay well over acrylic. So you can put this over acrylic paint, you can put acrylic paint over this with no issues, according to the people that have used it and reviewed it. So there's another option. You could put uh, Tamiya, um, X1 gloss black as a base and then put this stuff over that. Now, I can't speak for this stuff, but I have done that with my Alclad. Okay, I put it over enamel. I got really good bright finishes. I put it over the test, uh, sorry, the Tamiya X1 gloss and I found it, it sucked some of the brightness out of it. You may find that here. If you've done it, please share your results. That's what this thing is really all about. I want to share information that I find, and I'd like you to share information with me and anybody who happens to watch this video so we can all become better models, but I digress. So we talked about chrome. We talked about aluminum. They also make a lot of neat colors. They make coppers. And they make golds. And they make titanium. And they make a bunch of different uh, shades of aluminum. Now, this would be ostensibly for doing... Uh, bare metal aircraft, for example, and you want and you want to do different panel lines so you don't have a monochromatic looking wing and fuselage. The one criticism I read on a few of the forums about that is that they found that the paint varied greatly in the different shades, like from your titanium to your white aluminum to your pale aluminum to whatever you have. Um, they found that the contrast was too much, and if you use that on panel lines, you ended up with like a checkerboard effect. So you don't really want that. So they suggested taking a base color and maybe adding a few drops just to get that subtle panel differentiation. So that's another thing you experiment. Try it yourself. If you find this too much, just use a few drops of this and that to get the effect you want. They also have some really cool metallics. They have a metallic purple of all things. And I'm out of stock right now, but they have a metallic blue, which I'm dying to put on an AC Cobra body. If I get to doing that, I will share that result with you because I like the color. And if this lays down as well as I hope, I would really like to see the result. 
And speaking of laying it down, I have tried it. I used a brass or bronze color to put it on propellers on a German S boat I'm doing, 35th scale. So they're fairly big props. And I sprayed four of them with that paint and I found the fumes to be, you know, nothing worse than what you get from an enamel paint. Wear a mask, you don't want to breathe the particulate. You know, even the safest acrylics without smell, all the rest of it, you don't want to breathe particulate. So you want to have a good exhaust fan or you want to have a room fan blowing it away from you or you want to mirror mask. You don't want to breathe particulate. I don't care what it is. All paints as are we acrylic. From an earlier video all I did. acrylics are water-based. So what you have is that acrylic resin color in any paint, no matter what the carrier is, and you don't want to breathe that stuff. It's still acrylic particles. So just don't do it. Be protective. I did read in my investigation that uh, you can brush paint this stuff. It brush paints fairly well. So if you're doing machine guns and other metallic objects, tools on any of these, uh, landing gear struts and all this, this will brush. I already said it works well over acrylics. Acrylics work well over them. They also said, and I found this surprising, when you lay this stuff down and let it dry, you can put the Tamiya enamel panel wash over it and it doesn't affect it. I thought that was pretty exciting because the, the school of thought is if you paint enamel, you put acrylic over it, or you paint acrylic, you put enamel over it. You usually don't use the same stuff because you have a fear of it interacting, eating into it, staining, or anything but a wash. But they said that wasn't a problem. There was another issue with this stuff involving masking. Now, I read a lot of stuff about that. They, in all cases, they said the mask tape did not lift the paint, but they found it was leaving residue from the masking tape on the model. Now, the first thought was you have to remove it immediately. Some people said that worked. Some people said it didn't work. What the consensus seemed to be that when you're laying this stuff down, if you lay it down wet, I don't know if it's a longer time to cure and gas out and whatnot, but if you lay the paint down wet, and then when you think it's dry, you put the masking tape over it, that seems to bring the uh, residue off the tape onto the model. So the thought there was to put it on drier, like less uh, heavy coats and whatnot. Don't put it on wet, and you shouldn't have that problem. So I found that on a few different sites. I think that's, that sounds like a good uh, idea. I think that's about it for now. I hope you learned something from it. I hope I told you something you hadn't heard before. I certainly enjoyed researching this, so I learned a lot more about it, and I'm excited about trying it on different projects and models. So again, if you've used it, you like it, dislike it, please share your opinions. We want to hear them, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, we want to share information on everything involving model because everybody gets to read it, we get to share, we get to learn, and we get to grow as modelers and have a lot more fun in the hobby. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.